Hello and welcome to Focus here on France 24. It's been one week since the day of rage in Egypt after last Friday's prayers in Cairo and indeed one week since former diplomat and leading opposition figure Mohamed El Baradai arrived back in the country. The ex-head of the International Atomic Energy Agency has urged world leaders to abandon the current Egyptian pri uh, president and he's been taking part in those protests in Cairo. Speaking exclusively to France 24, he began by telling us the Middle East peace process wouldn't necessarily be harmed by any regime change in Egypt. There's two frictions which are, again continue to dominate the West, Western thinking that you know if Egypt becomes democratic you know it would immediately become hostile to the to the West to the US and to Israel and and that has that has no nothing to do with reality. I mean the, the Egyptian sentiments you know will will be the same you know vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinian issue, for example, or Iraq issue, irrespective of whether they are democracy or dictatorship. And to, ha to think that you have peace because there is one person in, in, you know, maintaining peace with Israel, you know, in defiance of the overall sentiment here, you know, uh, is, is not peace. Peace when, would, will come when everybody, every Egyptian, every Arab, you know, will feel that there is a, you know, a legitimate, uh, their aspiration, whether it's a Palestinian, whether it's the Iraqis, whether it's Somalis, that there is a fair, there's concern for their aspiration, but it doesn't mean at all that that a democratic Egypt will will abolish peace agreement, will go to war. Mr. El Baradai also addressed concerns in that interview about what would happen next in Egypt if Mr. Mubarak does step down. The other fiction is that we will immediately turn into Iran like like country when you have you know a religious state again this is a fiction the muslim brotherhood i have said 100 times are religiously conservative are they different from the orthodox jews in jerusalem are they different from the new evangelical in the midwest i mean it but as long as they work in peaceful way as long as they express their views within a, a, a democratic constitution with red lines of you know equality among all Egyptians, a civil state. Well, everybody has to be has to be a part of the process. And finally, he also spoke about the current state of law and order in Egypt. I think if you see if you see a country that has no police force, that has no army, that has no authority to protect innocent civilians. The writing is on the wall that it's a regime that 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 has to be replaced. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't it is not rocket science. It it can't uh, perform the basic functions of a government, which is to protect its own people. France Van Katz exclusive interview with Mohammed El Baradai there. Well, I'm joined now on the line from Beirut by Paul Salem, who's the director of the Carnegie Middle East Center based there in the Lebanese capital. Mr. Salem, thank you very much indeed for joining us here on France Van Katz. So uh, clearly, Mr. El Baradai in that interview playing down uh, the popularity of the Muslim Brotherhood in, in Egypt, um, because, of course, they are something of a scary prospect for, for the US in particular. So, so what is his relationship with, with them? Well, I mean, he's correct to say that the Muslim Brotherhood uh, have, uh, in recent years, moderated their positions. They've been open to uh, coalitions and cooperation with other uh, members of the opposition. Uh, they have uh, not taken the radical positions uh, that some uh, other parties in the region have, although they do support the Palestinian issue, Hamas and others. They are not as moderate or as uh, 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 well, as moderate as the AKP party in Turkey, but they're interested in that experience. Uh, they've been very stalwart in their support for uh, elections, for democratic reform, uh, and they've been in uh, intensive talks for a long time with other parties. So, yes, it is a concern, uh, like it would be a concern that any other powerful party and any other uh, democracy might dominate in a free election, but it's not something that uh, for the Egyptian people or indeed for the region or the world should prevent uh, a move towards democratization. Uh, they themselves are aware that, uh, you know, although they're powerful, they do not represent a, a majority in Egypt. They're also aware that this revolution in Egypt is not their revolution. It was a citizen's revolution. The citizens of all stripes stood up for human rights, for democratic rights, for pluralism, for pluralism. Uh, Muslims and Christians from Egypt did so, so they're very aware that this was not their doing, uh, and hence they have to be uh, partners in the process of change. Uh, it's also very important to remember that although the president of Egypt might be leaving 
soon uh, uh, the the army is not more leaving the uh, security forces are not leaving. It is not exactly regime change at all. It is a leader moving and some of his cohorts, uh, but a regime uh, really backed by the army and the security forces and so on, adjusting to a new situation and hopefully helping organize elections. In, in effect, uh, it should be, if it works well, more like the Turkish experience uh, a couple of decades ago when uh, when the army remained powerful, but uh, uh, sort of supervised and made sure that elections took place, but made sure that the constitution was respected, that pluralism was respected, and so on. And indeed, you, so you, you said that, that uh, ahead, but it, uh, yeah. you said that that the army might well end up overseeing any any elections that do take place. But how might they react to uh, to any possible win for the Muslim Muslim Brotherhood in those elections? Given you know the Muslim Brotherhood won twenty percent um, of the seats in in a previous election, even under restrictions. So is it likely um, that that they would do well? And how would, how might the army react if that happened? Well, I mean, it's you know obviously hard exactly to predict, but I think it's quite well understood and understood by the Muslim Brotherhood that uh, uh, you know the army and the international community and many in Egypt would be very concerned if uh, this sort of people's revolt and the removal of Mubarak and when it happens turns into uh, you know a power grab by the Muslim Brotherhood. I don't think that is uh, from you know talking to leaders of theirs and so on. That's not their ambition. That's not their plan. Uh, they do want the Egyptian system to become more democratic and more open. Uh, and in this phase, they would be very happy simply to be uh, for the decades of, of repression and torture that they've suffered from since, really, since the 1950s. Mm. Now, just, that, just that moving on it, slightly... That, you know, um, if, if we can, to, to talk about Mr. El Baradai himself. Um, mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. our reporters found that during his first appearance in, in uh, Takaris Square that, that very few people actually knew who he was or what, what he was about. So uh, what, how much of a role could he really play in any new government, given his, his profile isn't that big in Egypt, is it? Uh, not on the popular level. He's not a popularly known figure. Uh, it's important to note that there really isn't any popularly known opposition leader with, with a mass following. The Muslim Brotherhood as an organization has a large following, but they don't have one charismatic leader. Uh, part of that is by design, of course, because the Egyptian state has prevented anybody from being known. Uh, Mr. Baradre at this point uh, might be a figure that the opposition and perhaps the, you know, uh, the army and you know, what's left of the regime in this transitional period, they might or might not agree that he play an important role in the transition. He certainly is, uh, seems to be and is quite respected by many in the opposition. The regime deals with him uh, and has, of course, dealt with him in the past. The international community knows him and he certainly reassures that community. He seems at this point to be the most likely figure certainly to play an important role in the transition. Uh, it's another challenge altogether to win a presidential election. Okay, well, thank uh, you very much indeed in to uh, Paul Salem. I'm very sorry we have to finish there. We're out of time. But thank you very much indeed to Paul Salem from the Carnegie Centre in Beirut for joining us this morning. And indeed, many thanks to you for watching. Do stay tuned to Fast Fan Cat.